All right. Uh, so let's get started. Um, today, we are happy to have uh, Kevin Slager from Caltech. Uh, he's going to tell us about uh, his work on TQFT of fracton orders. Kevin, go ahead. All right. Thanks, Hassan. So is this 30 minutes or is it something shorter with questions? Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do 30 minutes plus questions. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay, so I'd like to talk about how um, some new work that's in progress on how we can describe fracton models in the continuum. Uh, and it'll be using a TQFT with defects. Uh, so let's just quickly review. There's a few different kinds of fracton models. Uh, on the left, there are U1 gauge theories that Michael Kretko uh, introduced. These are kind of like fracton versions of U1 Maxwell gauge theory. So they're also gapless and have photons except they also have fractons or other particles which can only move along lines or planes. And on the right, we have uh, two different kinds of gapped fracton models. These are kind of like fracton versions of torque code. Uh, so the difference between these type one and type two uh, fracton models is that in the type one fracton models, there are some excitations that can mo move. So these could be line-ons or plane-ons which move along lines or planes. But in the type two fracton models like Shaman and Haas code, the, none of the particles can move. Um, good, so, so this talk will be about the gapped type one and type two fractal models. I'm not gonna talk about Preco's U1 gauge theories. Um, so before their fractal models, they were topological orders like torque code. Um, so these are basically lattice models of Z2 gauge theory or two plus one D BF theory. Uh, the Hamiltonians in the top, you've got this plaquette operator, which is a product of Z's around a plaquette, and this cross operator, which is a uh, product of four X's along a cross. And it's gapped, exact solvable, stable to excitations, degeneracy four and a torus. And it's very interesting because you have these topological excitations, where excitations of this plaquette uh, we call a uh, flux. These are created at ends of strings of poly X operators. And then excitations of the cross are electric excitations created with strings of Z operators. And these, uh, these excitations, they have these uh, brain statistics. So if you wrap an E around an M, you get a minus one phase. And uh, this is to be contrasted with these new uh, fractal models. So this is the X cube model. Uh, introduced by Saga BJ, Zhang Wenha, and Liang Fu. Uh, so the Hamiltonian, it doesn't look too different. Instead of this plaquette operator, we have this cube operator, which is a product of 12 Zs around a cube. And we also have a cross operator, but now we're in 3D, and we're on 3D cubic lattice, and there's three of them. So in a sense, it looks kind of similar. It's also gapped, exactly solvable, stable to perturbations. But if you look at its degeneracy, it's huge. So on a system, a torus of L by L by L, it's exponentially large in system size. And the excitations are even more striking. Uh, so in this case, if we want to make one of these cube excitations, we have to use a membrane operator. So if I act on the ground state with these, uh, it's an X operator on each of these 16 links, I'll excite these four cube operators. And these are fracton excitations, they're immobile. Uh, that's because unlike the excitations in torque code, if I want to move one of these fracton operators by, for example, acting on some link with an X operator, I'll uh, delete this fracton, but I'll create three more fractons. So I can't really move a fracton. I end up just making more excitations if I try and move it. Uh, what one can do is one could move pairs of fractons. So I could move these top two fractons up or into the plane by acting with membranes of operators, but there's no way to move a single fracton without creating additional excitations. So this is very strange physics compared to what we're used to in topological orders. And then looking at the magnetic sector, so in this case, I can use string operators to create these excitations. So if I act with the string of Z operators on this blue string, I excite these cross operators at the end of the string, but I also excite cross operators where the string bends. So this tells us that these excitations are line-ons. They can only move in a straight line if they try and change direction, like in this case, this particle did. 
leave behind another excitation. In this case, you leave behind another line on excitation, which we move up or down. So kind of more generally, uh, this kind of type one gap fracton order, it has these excitations. Some of them move in planes and we call them planons. Some move along lines and we call them lineons. And some are mobile, the fracton, the cube operators. And so um, one difference between TQFTs or between uh, topological orders like tort code is we don't really have a nice continuing description of them yet, a TQFT description. So tort code, we know we can describe with BF theory or we can use some Antigon model to describe them. But in the case of fracton models, uh, for the gapped fracton models, there's no clear continuum description of them at the moment. And so in this talk, I'd like to describe what that is. And in particular, I'd like to convince you that the answer is a, a topological quantum field theory, like a normal one, except what we do is we have stacks of kind of defect layers. And I'll show you how this works. So this is the outline for my talk. Uh, so part one will be talking about how you can describe these uh, fractal models with the TQFT with defects. This is uh, based off of forthcoming work with Dave Asin, Dominic Williamson, Daniel Bulmash, and Abhinav Prem. And then I actually, I don't think I'll have time to talk about the second part of the talk, which is kind of a, a limit where you take the defect layers to be infinitesimally close together and you get a different kind of field theory description that's similar. Uh, cool, so let's get started. So first, what do I mean by a, a defect? So in toric code, uh, one simple kind of defect one can consider is this E and M exchange duality defect. So if we have some two-dimensional toric code and we put this duality defect, it's a line defect in the toric code. And if some E particle crosses this defect, it becomes an M particle. Well, if some M particle crosses the defect, it becomes becomes an E particle. So these two get interchanged in the defect. And the simplest way to realize this is to make a torque code with wens plaquette model and just make a dislocation in wens plaquette model, and this occurs. Um, one property of this defect is that it's invertible. If we take two of them and bring them together, they cancel each other out. Because if you swap in these particles twice, you basically did nothing. To make fractal models, we actually need non-invertible TQFT defects. So the simplest example of a non-invertible defect is kind of just taking a two-dimensional layer of torque code and embedding it in three-dimensional space. This is non-invertible because if you take two of these torque code layers and put them together, you still have just more torque code. And there's no other layer you can bring to cancel the torque code layer out. Uh, and this actually gives us one way to describe kind of a very trivial fractal-like model uh, using this defect description. So if we just start with the vacuum, so empty space, and then put a layer of 2D toric codes. If we like, we can consider each of these 2D toric codes as a topological defect of the vacuum. Uh, so we could describe each layer with a BF theory or anion model. And this gives us a uh, TQFT defect description of this planon model, which is a stack of 2D torque codes. So this kind of already tells us that we're on the right track. Um, we can describe this kind of trivial fracton-like model using this defect construction. Uh, but we'll have to do something more fancy to realize an actual fracton model, like an executed model. And an interesting side note, um, there's this paper a year ago by Dominic Els and Ryan Thorngreen they showed that uh, crystalline SBTs, so SBTs which are protected by spatial symmetries, uh, these could be classified by defect networks which use invertible defects. So like the kind of, well, different from the Tor code defect because that was a defect of a topological order, but they considered uh, topological defects of SBTs and showed that networks of these can give you crystalline SBTs and allowed you to classify them. In this talk, we'll talk about networks of non-invertible defects and how they give you fracton orders. Um, although currently we don't have a way to generate a classification of fracton models from this construction, but um, that could be an interesting method or avenue for future work to try and use this to classify fracton models. 
similar to how it was done in the SPT case. Um, so I have to review one more thing before we start the actual talk, and that's the 3D version of toric code. So this describes 3 plus 1 dBF theory. Um, so this time we're on a cubic lattice, and we have a Fouquet operator still, and the star operator is a little bit different. Now we have uh, six poly X operators at each vertex. Uh, so again, excitations of this star operator are charges, which are created by strings. But now uh, these plaquette operators, they're actually uh, loop excitations. So if I start on the ground state and I act with these nine poly X operators on these uh, nine red links, that'll excite 12 of these plaquette operators around this kind of membrane of X operators. And the nice way to think about it is this creates a loop of excitations of these plaquette operators. And so we call this a pi flux loop excitation. It's a pi flux because if one of these charge excitations wraps around the loop, it gets a minus one phase. Uh, okay, great. So now I can start part one of the talk. Um, and just real briefly, uh, let's summarize Torque code in kind of the way that it'll be convenient for the rest of this talk. So uh, 3D toric code, it can be described by 3D BF theory. If we like the Lagrange for this has this uh, gauge theory form. If you're not familiar with it, uh, don't worry. Um, and what we can create locally is gonna be important. Uh, so locally in toric code, you could create pairs of charges and I'll call these 3D toric code charges E prime to differentiate them from 2D toric code charges. And we could also locally create small loops of flux. And in 2D torque code, so I'll kind of, so here I draw a black line, which is trying to represent a two-dimensional plane for the 2D torque code to live on. And in 2D torque code, I can locally create pairs of charge excitations or pairs of flux excitations. Now to make a fractal model, so now we're gonna try and make the X cube model. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take a three-dimensional torque code and we're going to embed in it a bunch of stacks of these topological defects. And I'm not going to embed a torque code layer in it. I'm going to embed kind of a modified torque code layer. Uh, so the modified torque code layer, uh, the local excitations are different. So now I can actually make a single two-dimensional torque code charge excitation if I also make a three-dimensional torque code charge on each side of it. So this triple of charges is now a local excitation. And in the flux sector, I can also make a pair of fluxes of the 2D torque code, but they have to be bound to the ends of a three-dimensional torque code flux string. Um, and if you like the field theory descriptions, the way you can realize this kind of uh, two-dimensional T of T is by taking the 2D torque code uh, BF theory and adding this extra term, which couples the 2D toric code BF theory to the 3D BF theory. So this is just some kind of um, two-dimensional defect. Uh, you can describe it with a lattice model, which I'll briefly mention later in the talk. Um, so it's you know gapped and exactly solvable. Um, but for the purposes of this talk, all that matters, or for the next few slides at least, all that matters is that these are the excitations that you can make locally. Because what you can make locally will affect uh, basically the mobility restrictions of the particle. So now what I'd like to do is take my uh, you know, 3D TQFT, which is the 3D torque code, and let's make a stack of these defects in three directions. So here I have a stack in the vertical direction, a stack uh, in this direction, and then also there's a stack in the plane, uh, but I can't really see that because it's a 2D projection. So we've got three stacks of these defects, and what I wanna consider doing is taking one of these 3D torque code charges and moving it across a few of the defects. So in order to move the charge across the defect, the only thing I can do is create this uh, triplet of excitations, which is the only thing I can do locally at the defect. And that allows me to cancel out the 3D torque code charge defect that I started with, essentially move it across the defect, but I've left behind a 2D torque code charge. Uh, 
And if I keep doing this, so I make this uh, triple of charges again, cancel out a 3D torque co charge, and do that a couple of times, I managed to move my 3D torque co charge across a few defects. But uh, sorry, Kevin, Kevin, can I can I ask a question? Uh, yes, please. So so actually, so uh, in your, in your previous slide, actually, uh, that 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 construction breaks the cubic lattice symmetry, right? Because actually, you uh. I mean, your 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 layer is only in one direction, in uh, one uh, you know uh, x y plane, for example. Uh huh. So your theory will break the cubic light symmetry. But I thought I thought I, I mean eventually the fracton model at least has the cubic light symmetry. Is that right? Uh well, so in this slide I have cubic lattice symmetry because I have a stack of layers in each of the three directions. So in the x y y z oh, okay. z x okay. planes. Okay, fine. Yeah, okay. But yeah, the slide can only show you one direction. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for asking. Mm -hmm. um, right. So the point was if we're trying to move one of these 3D torque code charges, and since we can only create this triple of charge at each defect, the only way we can move the 3D torque code charge across a bunch of defects ends up leaving behind these 2D torque code charges. And each of these 2D torque co charges costs energy. So, in order to move this charge across a bunch of defects, we have to leave behind the string of energy, which basically tells us that the 3D torque co charge is linearly confined to the uh, basically a little cube where it started with, which is exactly like a fracton in the X cube model. And indeed, this uh, E prime is a fracton of the same kind of X cube model phase. Um, so actually in our paper, uh, actually in our a previous paper, we took a model equivalent to this defect construction model that I'm telling you about and showed that it could be uh, mapped exactly to the X cube model with some extra qubit operators. Um, and in that paper, we also showed that these E prime excitations are the fracton excitations of the X cube model. So there's an exact mapping between this in the X cube model, and this is the uh, fracton. So in the X cube model, pairs of fractons are plane on excitations, which can move in planes. And the same happens for pairs of these E prime excitations in this model. So if you take a pair of these guys and move them, so again, you kind of create these two E particles, but now you can move these two E particles together and annihilate them since they're part of the same 2D toric code layer. And then we can do this again, move the E primes across, annihilate the 2D torque code E's, and so forth. So this tells us that pairs of these uh, E primes uh, can move. So here I show that they can move left and right, but they can also move into the plane. They just can't move up and down. Um, so that means that these pairs of fractons are planons, which is exactly the case in the X cube model. Um, and this makes sense because if we look at what we could do locally, the fact that I could create this triple of excitations also means that if I start with two E primes, I can combine them into a single 2D torque code E charge. And that 2D torque code charge can move along a plane. Um, so that also explains why pairs of these fractons are a plane on in this model. Um, good, so now let's look at the flux sector. So I told you that um, I can create these pairs of M particles, but they're tied together by these 3D torque co-charge flux strings. Um, so that basically means that if I have two of these M particles, they're kind of linearly confined to be close to each other because moving them apart costs a lot of energy due to this flux string excitation, which costs energy along the string. But a different kind of excitation that I consider is if I create a 2D torque code charge on two different layers, uh, these charges, I'm sorry, uh, create a 2D torque code uh, fluxes on two different layers. Uh, these two flux excitations are again bound by a flux string, but this excitation can move. So if we go to the 3D picture view, so here we have two defect layers and the two fluxes on the two layers connected by their flux string this kind of composite excitation, it can move along the intersection of the 2D defect, but it can't really move up or across 
because one of the fluxes is attached to a layer which can't move. And so this is a line on excitation and it's exactly the line on of the 3D Tor code, of the, sorry, it's the line on of the X-cube model phase. Um, so this is great. So we started with this uh, X-cube fractal model and using this kind of, kind of interesting fancy uh, topological defect, uh, we were able to reconstruct the excitations of the X-cube model by just taking this uh, stacks of this defect in three different directions. Um, good, and in a, a previous work, we actually uh, wrote down a lattice model uh, for this uh, kind of T Q of T description uh, where the Tor code layers basically get modified by an additional X operator, which lives on the paquette. Uh, so I'll only briefly go over this lattice model. It won't really be important in the talk. Um, and so the 3D torque code in this lattice model, instead of describing it with uh, poly operators on links of the cubic lattice, it's more convenient to put the 3D torque code charge on the plaquettes of a cubic lattice. So this star operator becomes kind of cube operator and the plaquette operator of the 3D torque code becomes kind of a propeller operator. So instead of four links around a plaquette, it becomes these four plaquettes. And uh, all that happens in this defect is these 2D torque code charges, 2D torque code operators and 3D torque code operators get modified a little bit. So the plaquette operator of the 2D torque code also gets an X operator in the center of it. So an X operator for the, the plaquette of the 3D torque code. And whenever one of these propeller operators intersects a 2D torque code, it also gets an extra Z operator in the link. So that's just the lattice model. It's uh, not very important. The main important part of the talk was describing or trying to convince you that we had this TQFT description. And this description, uh, we think is actually quite general. Um, so in this X cube construction, uh, I mainly focused on uh, two dimensional topological defects. But in general, uh, these defects can so-called stratify space. So this is a term the math literature uses. Um, it's kind of like a cellulation, except the cellulation might involve a very fine lattice that I showed these black lines here. But then the TQFT uh, defects also stratify space with kind of a bigger uh, cellulation, which is called a stratification. Um, so in this case, these red layers would be like the 2D torque code defect, but also where these uh, 2D defects, which are called two strata, uh, intersect along so-called one strata, you can have a different kind of TQFT defect. And where these uh, one strata defects uh, combine, you can have a zero strata point defect. And looking at different kinds of um, one strata and two strata TQFT defects can also give you uh, interesting physics. Um, so actually, uh, uh, Danny, uh, Daniel Bolmash figured out in our collaboration how we can describe Haas B code using this kind of defect construction. So this is, uh, we think is actually quite general. It describes more than just the x cube model. Um, so Haas B code, it's a type two fractal model with no mobile excitations. Uh, this is a Hamiltonian in the top right. And um, it also seems to admit a defect construction. So instead of using one 3D torque code, we use two copies of 3D torque code. And on the two dimensional two strata defects, we condense the flux and on uh, the one strata we have to do, so where the two dimensional defects intersect, we also have to consider a kind of more exotic um, kind of uh, defect where you're allowed to create uh, certain kinds of uh, groups of 3D uh, charge excitations of the 3D torque code. So here blue and orange label charges of the two different 3D torque codes. And so if you can create things like this locally, uh, what this ends up allowing you to do is doing this a bunch of times to create particles at ends of kind of a fractal operator. 
So you move these charges along all these little colored strings. And that basically corresponds to acting with the fractal operator along all these lines. And that creates charges at the corner of the fractal operator, which is exactly what happens in Haas B code. Uh, so Haas B code is kind of just kind of a different version of what we usually call Haas code. Um, so this kind of leads us to a conjecture uh, that all gap fractal models can be realized using one of these defect TQ of T's. Um, in our paper, we're also working on a non-abelian fractal model, which can be realized using this defect construction. And uh, there are a few other abelian examples that we can consider. And we don't really see any obstruction to why we can't construct any gapped uh, fractal model. So we conjecture that you can, but we don't know how to prove this at the moment. Um, oh, so good. So that was basically the end of this part of the talk. Um, so the important point is that we can describe these gap fractal models using this continuum description of stacks of defect layers. And uh, this is nice because before these models only had lattice descriptions, and it wasn't clear how you could describe these in the continuum. Um, and maybe very briefly, I'll mention this other paper, which is a, a year old. It describes essentially the same X cube model that I just described, but um, it kind of took a different perspective where we kind of zoom out and make the defect layers infinitesimally close together. Um, and this kind of allowed us to give a slightly more continuum version of this picture. Um, I don't have time to go over this slide, but one can kind of connect torque code to BF theory by writing BF theory in space time. And one sees that um, this first term kind of tells you that A and B are conjugate fields. So here A and B are two different gauge fields. Uh, B is not a magnetic field. It's not the curl of A, it's just an independent gauge field. And then these two terms in BF theory tell you that B naught's Lagrange multiplier saying you have no flux excitation, so no curl of A, and A naught's Lagrange multiplier saying that B has no curl. And B can be thought of kind of a divergence of a different field, so it's the charge excitation. Uh, to describe 3D torque code, you use 3D BF theory where B is a two form. And uh, so the perspective we took in this paper is we have this continuum of these defects and we could write down a Lagrangian for that. And kind of the way we do that is if you have some stack of these defect layers, we introduce this one form field E. And the idea is if you integrate this one form along some line, it'll count the number of layers you cross. And if these lines have no dislocation, then this one form should have no curl, which is, it's a closed one form. Um, and so to describe the XQ model, we need three stacks of layers. So we'll have three of these different foliation fields E indexed by K. So K will be one, two, or three for the X cube model. And for the X cube model, these layers are kind of flat. So basically uh, this one form takes a value of delta. So K is one, two, or three. Mu could be zero, one, two, or three for space time. And um, this would give you a, a flat stacking of layers. But in general, these layers could be curved, in which case you'd have a more complicated expression for E. And the Lagrangian for kind of this continuum description, uh, you have a term like this, which is like a stack of 2D torque codes. And it's one form. Uh, foliation field basically just makes the stack orthogonal to the uh, foliation field. We have a 3D torque code given by this 3 plus 1 dBF theory, and they're coupled together similar to how they were coupled in the defect construction. Um, and in this, so in this uh, field theory, we can also see the mobility constraints. Uh, uh, Kevin, can I, can I ask another question? So, sure. so in, your, in your previous slide, what's, what is NF? NF is uh... The number okay. of, uh, of stacks of foliation, yeah. Okay, okay, cool, okay. Uh, thanks. Um, 
Great. And if we want to see the mobility constraints in this field theory, we can couple the field theory to source terms, J and I. And um, similar to uh, normal BF theory, where you see that you have charge conservation due to gauge invariance, uh, you get the same thing here. So if you ask that um, these source terms are gauge invariant, this imposes constraints on these source fields. And all these constraints correspond exactly to the fractal mobility constraints. So here, J is, little j is the fracton current. And we see that it's conserved, telling us that the fracton number is conserved. Um, this constraint tells us that uh, this big J has to be conserved along 2D layers, telling us that it's a plane on. And then this constraint's more interesting. It tells us that any divergence of this um, plane on source uh, leads to a current of the fracton order. Uh, which is to say in order for a fracton to move, we need to have some uh, divergence of the planon uh, field, which means we have to absorb or create some planons, just like in the execute model. And this can be generalized to uh, twisted fracton orders, which we did in this uh, paper with Wilbur, Shirley, and Xia Chen. Uh, so it also admits one of these uh, field theories, and it also admits a defect. Uh, picture. Um, so I should conclude because I think my time's up. Um, so thank you. So I uh, try to convince you that you could construct gapped fractal models using a TQFT with defects. Uh, thanks a lot, Kevin. So now we have a few minutes for questions. Um, can I ask a question? Uh -huh. So it's about the part one of your talk. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit lost in the details, but at the end of the day, what is the Lagrangian for your fracton TQFT? Um, right. So in the three-dimensional bulk, we use a uh, Lagrangian of BF theory. So this and let me B... just make sure the little b is a two form and the little a is a one form. That's correct. Okay. And then we also have to sum over each uh, two-dimensional layer. And on each two-dimensional layer, we put this Lagrangian, where we have a one-form big B and one-form big A. And then we also add this extra term with this two-form little B and this one-form big A. So the big A and B only live on these two plus one D layers, and the little A and B live everywhere. Can I ask a related question? Uh-huh. The the, it, this might be an issue of terminology. You started with a lot in, in the two plus one Tory code, you had a continuum Lagrangian, which is essentially uh -huh. the line that we have here. And you also had the lattice model. And one difference between them is that the continuum Lagrangian has exact translation symmetry that the lattice model does not have. That's right. Now, I thought that the goal was to do a similar thing in the, for the three plus one dimension of Tory code. And the bulk term that you have indeed satisfies that. But in the end of the day, the system you have is really a lattice system, except that you replace the planes of the lattice by continuous planes. But you still have an underlying lattice. Right. I still have an underlying kind of stratification of these defects. Well, you basically. Necessary. You took all the planes on the lattice and put a continuum. Instead of putting degrees of freedom on the links and the sides on the plaquettes, you put continuum field theory degrees of freedom on the on the three different kinds of planes in exactly. the lattice. And in huh. particular, you do not have translation invariant. So exactly. In, in this might be just a question of terminology. In what sense is this a continuum field theory? Um, not like the two, the two, it's not like the two Lagrangians that you wrote here in this slide that we've now shared. It, so it is the two Lagrangian this slide. And it's a continuum because I could make the lattice finer and finer without changing the phase of matter. But that's always the case with lattice models. Uh, so in the and execute always... model, that's not clear. If you make the lattice of the execute model finer, you end up increasing the topological degeneracy. But in this case, now I can make the lattice finer without increasing the topological degeneracy. So what plays the role of 
the number of lattice sites in the X. So in the X cube model, there's this formula with L1 plus L2 plus L3. Yeah, so what that these, L is the number of defect layers along some direction. Right, but this number is, fi is held fixed or do you send it yeah. to Yeah, and that number can be held fixed while making the lattice finer, which is not something you can do in the X cube model. But I mean, if I might chime in here, uh, I mean, I think th this is not what I would call a continuum description of a fracton phase, because if you, you know, what, what, what I, what I, I mean, I think it's a very interesting construction, but I don't think it's the sort of equivalent of a continuum QFT of a, of a fracton phase, because what you would want is really to be able to coarse grain so that at some scale, you don't see the distance between these layers anymore. Um, so, you know, what your, the, the older work that you briefly talked about in the last part, I mean, that's, I'm not totally sure that we understand that as a continuum theory either, but that's much closer to what I would actually call a continuum description of, of, of Frank. Yeah, my, my question was essentially the same as Mike's comment. Uh -huh. yeah, you I still have a lattice, and as you make the lattice spacing smaller, in order to keep the generacy fixed, you have, mm -hmm. to, you have to make the, the space smaller. So it's not really a continuum model. It, it lives in the continuum. You just have to add some discrete number of defects. But if you like another way to say it is instead of viewing this as a continuum model, you can view it as a fractal model based out of older TQFT technology. So we, we just used defects of TQFTs, which was established before fractons exist and created fractons from those. So perhaps that's a different perspective one could, one could yeah, take. Sorry, I mean, yeah, so, so frankly, because the ground state degeneracy knows about the size of the system, so I don't know whether seeking for a continued description is the right route to describe this system because actually uh, in the end of the day actually any description if you wanted to capture the uh, topological well I mean, the degeneracy of the ground state you have to know the size of the lattice uh, right <laughs> so the lattice information will come in so i'm not sure whether seeking for a, you know i mean the effort of looking for a, a continued description is is a you know, it's, it's the right direction to go because like, eventually you have to know the lattice. Yeah, uh, yeah so Senka, so I disagree with that comment actually. Uh, although for some fracton phases, I think I might agree. Uh, the reason I disagree is because you can do foliated RG for some fracton models, you can make them into RG fixed points. Although the rules of the game are different from unusual RG. So that suggests, I think that some kind of continuum description should exist. Uh, but it also should look different from an ordinary QFT. So once you do RG, you have to change the system size. You're, sorry, you change the size of the lattice, right? So somehow the degeneracy will also change. Yeah, yeah in this RG, um, you're allowed to change the degeneracy. Yeah, in foliated RG, that you're allowed to change the degeneracy, right? So that's, it's a very unusual kind of RG. Uh, okay. Right. So, so, you know, for example, for the X cube model, it's probably possible to have a continuum theory where you sort of wind up modding out by a lot of the ground state degeneracy that's associated with some layers that you're allowed to add and remove. Uh, you know, we, I don't think we really know how to do that. Um, but, but I think, you know, th there oh, is, I see what I, I mean. Okay. okay I, yeah. I, I, what, okay, what I'm saying yeah, is yeah, I think there is a very good reason to hope that that's possible. Uh, although for, for maybe for Haas code, there is maybe no reason to hope that it's possible, <laughs> at least so and, far. Yeah, I see what you mean. So by, by doing RG, actually, you, you're basically co-screening in a way that you're actually adding layers of topological, wait, sorry, 2D topological order yes. and do RG based on that. Right. Okay, fine. Okay. okay and regarding fine. motivation, another uh, motivation was in the case of these crystalline SPTs, these defect networks allowed you to classify them. Uh, we hope, but we're not sure if this is possible that you could also use these uh, defect networks to classify fracton orders. So that's another motivation in addition to the continuum limit motivation. Actually, Kevin, I had a question. Uh, uh -huh. so if you go to slide 18, the one you were just showing now. Uh, yeah, so uh, can I think of this new term you get, this little b wedge a? Uh, mm -hmm. Can I think of it in terms of condensing something uh, you start with a Z2 topological order, um, two-dimensional. You insert mm -hmm. a plane into this 3D topological order, and then should I think of a think of condensing some 
uh, something to uh, get this coupling or uh, you can uh, that's it a bit that one way you can arrive at this coupling um, another way to think about this is to kind of fold space around this two-dimensional boundary so now I have kind of two copies of 3d torque code which mm -hmm. have a boundary of this two-dimensional uh, layer and you can think of this kind of 2d layer as one kind of boundary of two copies of 3D Tor code after I've done this folding into, you know, another dimension of space. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so in addition to thinking about it as some sort of strange condensation, you can also think about it as a different kind of boundary of two copies of 3D Tor code. Uh, but in terms of strange condensation, what did you condense? Uh, um, so if, I'll, if you like, I could condense this triple of charges, I believe. Uh -huh. Uh, I see. Or not quite. I don't. I don't like to think about it as a condensation. To be honest, I like to think about it as one kind of gap boundary. Mm -hmm. and, uh, can I think of this B little B wedge capital A term as so? How is it related to like the, the P string condensation picture of the sorry, uh, of the fractal model? Um, well, it tells you that you have to bind these ends of the three D fluxes to these M particles. Okay. And uh, does this, I mean, this wedge product, does it really make sense? Like, uh, how do I define this wedge product between a two form in three plus one and uh, uh, a one form in the two plus one layer? Um, I, th I thought you were allowed to do that. Okay. All right. Okay, thanks. Uh, the form, the numbers add up. So in the interest of time, let's move on to the next speaker and let's thank the uh, thank Kevin again. Thanks.